day 22, Tone Beeper for the Logic Probe, which was day 19's project. Um, as I discussed in that video, I thought about adding taps off the, uh, the lead drivers to drive some kind of tone generator, so I've done exactly that. I swapped the lead and the resistor around in the, uh, in the collector of this PNP, but it actually doesn't make a heck of a lot of difference, but um, it's convenient because the lead has a you know, 1.8-ish volt drop for a 1.5-ish volt, I think, depending on the actual physics of the lead, um, for this red lead, which is the high indicator. So I'm calling that signal A, and signal B is the uh, open collector of the green driver. So the, the tone generator is very simple. Uh, it's, the f it's the oscillator that we actually used in the blinking project. It's uh, just set up to make a tone frequency, a high, you know, an audio frequency. It's driving a piezo directly. Um, nothing particularly special about any of the values apart from that's what I had uh, lying on the heap and junk on the desk, and that's what I used. But they're they're quite quite uh, reasonable values. Okay, these two resistors control the actual tone. This is the uh, the low frequency tone, so higher resistance for lower frequencies. And this is the high frequency selecting resistor. Uh, I had to add a uh, a buffer because obviously this is a positively asserted signal. It's a negatively asserted signal, but you know just a single transistor. I actually tried tapping off further down here and it caused all kinds of problems for the rest of the circuit. Uh, also ran into an interesting problem, if you don't put this resistor in here, the red lead acts as a, uh, a photodiode. So it, uh, it generates enough current to actually disturb the low frequency tone when it's in operation because uh, the other photo current generated by the, the lead when it's exposed to the fluorescent lights in here caused the, uh, the tone to get all mushed up by this resistor getting pulled up and down. Um, that wouldn't be so bad, it's just a muddy, horrible kind of tone, except it also sounds like what happens when you're probing an AC circuit, because essentially what's happening is that you know, as the wave, as the uh, waveform switch, switches between positive and negative, it, uh, it is pull, uses this resistor or this resistor, so you get a, a modulation of the tone frequency, and it sounds fairly similar depending on the, um, the duty cycle. That's also a feature of now of this logic probe in that it can give you... Um, you know, essentially an AC detection or pulse detection and a, a bit of an idea of the duty cycle of the waveform that's, uh, that you're listening to, probing. Alrighty, so, uh, practical implementation. Well, I still haven't taken it off the, uh, the sorterless breadboard yet, but as you can see, I added some transistors over here and an extra one there. A couple more resistors as drawn, nothing special. And obviously a piezo. Alrighty, so let's go high and low. Uh, quiescent current hasn't been changed very much. I think I uh, measured it about 12 microamperes. Um, pulls a little bit less than a milliamp. Um, I think it's about 800 microamperes. Uh, these are high efficiency LEDs that so you might need to change things. You know, these these resistors here set the current through the LEDs. If you have uh, particularly old or or crappy LEDs, or you know, you have particularly good LEDs better than these ones, then you may need to change these values. But uh, 1K is through you know, 3 ohms, it's not very much current at all, particularly seeing these transistors aren't driven particularly hard. In, in any case, if you do need to change them, you can drop them down to you know, a couple hundred ohms probably. Uh, depends on the particular LEDs you're using, whatever's appropriate for the, the LED that you're driving. Um, yeah, that's it. Very simple addition really, although it took me some time to, to work it out because I ran into all those problems with the, uh, the light modulation. As a matter of fact, I can show you that. Let's pull... Yeah. Which resistor is it? I think it's this guy here. Oh, shut up. It's also high impedance, so if you touch it, you'll uh, send, tend to set off the buzzer. So obviously when I build it, I'll have to be a little bit careful about how I build it, but okay. High frequency, as you see, is fine. Low frequency, sounds bloody awful. And... It's light sensitive. That could almost be a feature, but uh, unfortunately for this particular application it's not, and one lousy little 100, 110k, I think actually, but 100k resistor pretty much eliminates the problem. Alrighty, this is a quick one. Uh, kind of a cute project. I'm definitely going to build it up into a little board, probably uh, strip a circuit board, a bit longer than, than this, but and uh, I'll bring it to a point, and I'll probably use a bobby pin or something. Oh, I had some tacks hanging around somewhere in the junk heap that actually make pretty good probes. They're hard to solder to though because they're uh, I think they're stainless steel but if you scrape them a bit and uh, you, particularly if you put some zinc chloride flux on them they tin pretty well. Alrighty, um, two days left. Wow, what, what can we do? <laughs> 
I, I have some RF projects that I want to do, but I, you know, I'm not going to stop with uh, the whole Advent series. So I'm obviously going to stop with the Advent part of the series, but I'm, uh, I'm going to keep doing other circuits, obviously, as I, as I find time, but perhaps slightly less rushed. It's, uh, it's been a bit of a marathon, and uh, I'd hate to stumble at the finish. So, uh, alrighty, till, uh, till the next video. Bye.